Hey folks, thought we'd look at uh, yeah, some solutions to the quiz lab that you did. Um, you know, I'm not going to go over in the screencast number one or number two. That's something that we can do in class. So I thought we would um, uh, take a look at some of them that are, are cruising around here in number three. So let's start with three. Uh, a, you were asked to evaluate uh, the integral, uh, cotangent x, the natural log, of sine x. Uh, so let, let, me, let me minimize this and uh, pull up a pad for me to work on here. So when you're asked to integrate here in 3a, uh, it's the integral of cotangent x, uh, the natural log of sine x dx. Uh, I think what we should do here is we should probably start off by doing a u sub. And since I always like to use, uh, you know, on the board a red color pen for u sub, let me see if I can get a red color pen here. Uh, I'd let u equal the natural log of sine x. Now, if I let u equal the natural log of sine x, du is going to be, well, the derivative of natural log is 1 over the sine of x, and then the chain rule. Uh, the derivative of sine is cosine x dx. So check it out. du is uh, cosine x over sine x. And cosine x over sine x, well, we know that is cotangent x dx. So when I, let me go back to my black pen now. Uh, when I substitute in, you know, we see that the, uh, the integral just simply becomes integral, uh, well, u u is the natural log of sine x, so there's u, and then du is cotangent x dx. So that's the integral. And pretty friendly now, we know the antiderivative is 1 half u squared plus c. Resubstitute, that gives us 1 half the natural log of sine x, that quantity squared plus c. Or some of you wrote it as 1 half the natural log squared sine x plus c. So that's what you should have had for, um, um, well, that's what you should have had for 3a. So it's a basic use of. Uh, right, now if we, uh, if we check out b, let me uh, make this a little bigger so we can see it. We check out 1b. I uh, thought we'd look at this one real quick. It's the antiderivative of 1 over 9 plus 4x squared dx. Uh, so let me come back to my handy-dandy little notepad, and uh, let me get a new piece of paper. And here, if we, uh, hopefully we recognize, this is just a basic um, arctan. So if you see this 1 over 9 plus a 4x squared dx, if you see that as a 1 over a 3 squared plus a 2x squared dx, using our basic arctan formula, you see a is equal to 3 and u is equal to 2x. But keep in mind, if u is 2x, then du is a 2dx, or a 1 half du is an x dx. So when we just crank this through our basic arctan formula, we should get a 1 half, it's coming from the 1 half du, 1 half times 1 over a uh, inverse tangent of u over a plus c. And, you know, I'll just simplify that to 1 sixth uh, inverse tangent 2x over 3 plus c. And that's all there was to 3b. Now for 3c, I'm going to blow that up again here and make sure we can, you know, read it. 3c, the arctan, or we're going to integrate the tangent of 2 over x, and then all that junk's over x squared dx. Okay, we're going to have to take a little side trip here and come up with a little formula for uh, the antiderivative of tangent. Uh, too many of you are saying, what the antiderivative is because you're just simply looking in the book. Um, so I thought, you know what, I've, I've mentioned this. Let's go ahead and uh, let's look at the uh, 
uh, derivation for uh, inverse or for the uh, uh, tangent. So here we go. Formula for the antiderivative of the tangent function. Uh, the first thing you should do when coming up with a uh, formula for tangent is rewrite it as sine over cosine. This is a very straightforward u sub, folks. You let u equal cosine x, du is a negative sine x dx, or negative du is equal to sine x dx. You substitute in that gives you negative integral 1 over u du, and the antiderivative of 1 over u, we all know that should be uh, natural log, so we have negative natural log absolute value of u, L plus c, and then resubstitute. So we have negative natural log absolute value cosine x plus c. Let me just stress, this is equivalent to the natural log absolute value of secant x, which a lot of you said because you found that in the book. This is a more user-friendly version for the a formula for antiderivative of tangent x, especially if you have a definite integral. Because if you have a definite integral and you need to evaluate uh, utilizing the fundamental theorem of calculus, I think it's a lot easier to do the evaluation for cosines than it is secants. I mean, hell, you'd have to, if someone asks you what the, the secant of pi over 6 is, you'd first have to compute what the cosine of pi over 6 is, and then take the reciprocal to get the secant. So just knowing this, I think, is going to be a little more user-friendly for you now, in the future, and differential equations the rest of your life. Um, so that's our quick little sidetrack. Before we do, uh, you know, C, uh, coming up with the antiderivative of tangent 2 over x, uh, all that junk over uh, x squared. So here, let's try to work through that now. Um, so let me let me minimize this a little. Pull up my uh, handy dandy thing. And let me get a new one. So here we go. Three C. We are coming up with uh, the antiderivative of tangent of two over x and all that junk over x squared dx. And it's going to be a U sub, so, all right, hey, let me get my red pen here, because, uh, you know, I always like to use a red pen for a uh, uh, U sub. So if you, let, um, if you let U equal 2 over X, uh, keep in mind 2 over X is 2X to the negative first, you get DU is equal to negative 2 over x squared dx. Well, if, if d is negative 2 over x squared dx, that means a negative 1 half du is a 1 over x squared dx. And um, uh, let me switch back to my, to my black pen, because I think I see what the substitution is going to be. So I, I make my substitution. So I substitute u for 2 over x, so I have the tangent of u. And then my dx is taken care of, or my 1 over x squared dx is taken care of by negative 1 half du. Put the negative 1 half out front, du. Now the antiderivative of tangent u, we just derived that. Uh, and we know the antiderivative of tangent is negative uh, natural log uh, absolute value of cosine u, so negative one half times negative, that gives us a positive one half natural log absolute value of cosine u plus c. Resubstitute, so we have one half the natural log absolute value cosine two over x plus c, and that should be it for uh, that should be it for three c. So let me come back to the uh, to the quiz lab, and let's look at 3D. 3D, you folks did a pretty good job on 3D. Uh, most of you remembered the trick to multiply numerator and denominator by e to the negative x. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go over that one. Um, 3E, 
Uh, you did a pretty good job of letting u equal the denominator. So 3d and 3e, you know, we'll briefly go over that in class. 3f, uh, boy, what's happening here with 3f? You have the integral of 1 over an x squared minus 4x plus 9. Uh, you know what, I think we're going to save 3f for class, going over in class as well. Number 4, when I look at number 4, you know, what I see here is um, a classic situation of we're going to have to split the integral. We're going to have to split this into uh, two separate integrals. So, um, you know, well, let's take a quick look here at, uh, at number 4 and splitting it into uh, two separate integrals. So let me uh, let me minimize this. Let me get my uh, uh, tablet back up here. Let me get a new sheet of paper. And number four, number four is uh, the integral from zero to one, x plus three over the square root of four minus x squared dx. Okay, I see that as splitting it into two integrals. The integral from 0 to 1, x over the square root of 4 minus x squared dx, plus the integral from 0 to 1, 3 over the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And then you know, some of you, some of you, uh, you asked me in class, and it's a it's a good question, that if it was okay to uh, rip that three out front of this integral. So let me go ahead and do that because of course it is, of course it's okay to rip out that three. And now check it out. I think what you have here, what you should have, are uh, two pretty easy integrals. You should see for this integral right here, it's going to be a basic u sub that's going to take care of this. You let u equal the junk that's under the uh, uh, radical, and um, pretty straightforward. This one here is a is really straightforward. It's nothing more than uh, inverse sine. U is x, a is two. Straightforward. So the first integral you do a u sub, and if you do that correctly, you should get the uh, the antiderivative is negative square root 4 minus x squared. The second integral, as I said, it's a basic, very basic uh, inverse sine. So you should have the antiderivative to be 3 inverse sine x over 2. And then your fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluate this from 0 to 1. So when the 1 goes in, uh, let's see, 1 comes in, uh, 1 squared is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, so you have negative square root 3, and um, oh, let me write it out, plus 3 inverse sine of 1 half, minus, and then when the 0 goes in, uh, Let's see, 0 squared is 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, well, that's pretty easy, so we have a negative 2 plus 3 inverse sine of 0. So you should get um, negative square root 3 plus 3 times the inverse sine of 1 half, inverse sine of 1 half is pi over 6, and then you have uh, plus 2, and inverse sine of 0 is 0, so 3 times 0 is 0, so final answer is negative square root 3 plus pi over 2 plus uh, 2. And let's see uh, what else is left on the uh, quiz lab. Uh, number 5, yeah, number 5 we'll look at in class. So. Um, that's it. Quick, uh, quick uh, video solution for some of the items on the quiz lab. Uh, we will look at the we will look at the entire quiz lab in class on Monday. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully most of these look familiar and you're preparing for the test. See you Monday. Thanks for watching.